Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to take something old and make it new again. I love doing these kind of videos. Yes, I am the king of cheap, and I come by that name honest, honestly, and I'm about to tell you how. If I could, The power of Christ compels me if I could learn to speak. So, oh, old and new again, you've done this old hat trick a hundred times. Yes, but I'm going to take these two Dell R710s that I have that seem to be suited to nothing better than file storage and, and virtual machines, and I'm going to put... A certain operating system on these machines and make them do my bidding and I'm not going to take some old antiquated operating system and put them on these machines I'm going to put Windows on these machines and I'm going to put Windows Server 2022 on them and show you why I so like Microsoft software sometimes because how old are these Dell R710s? I don't know. You do the look up and you tell me how old they are. I'll wait while you do that. No, not really. I won't wait. But I think you can see my point. Now, these machines are not the most power efficient machines. I wouldn't want to leave them running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because when they're, they're, when they're loaded up and they're not at idle, they're consuming about 200 watts apiece. So that's, you know, that's quite a bit of power. And if they don't need to be on all the time, they don't. What I can do with them is I can have failover. So if, you know, one of my regular hypervisors is down or whatever, I can move virtual machines onto these machines and keep them up and running while I'm doing some maintenance. The other thing that one of these Dell R710s has that none of the others have are three and a half inch drive bays. So if you're like me, and you like using spinning rust for archival purposes, this is the perfect solution. Also, I don't need to pass through any devices on this hypervisor to a virtual machine. Not really. Because if I can run everything in a native Windows mode, I don't even need to set up a Hyper-V machine for it. It can run native on the on the core of the kernel of the, the server operating system. So it's the perfect candidate for Windows. And because Windows is so good at supporting legacy hardware, I was able to put it on these units and have all my devices, including my ancient Mellanox Connect X2 cards, work out of the box. Take that, VMware, Proxmox, and XCPNG. <laughs> now, there's really not that much to go into. I'm not going to show you me installing Server 2022 on these machines because it's boring but we are going to go look at them up and running and and i'm going to talk to you about what i've used them for and then we'll give you an example exactly as i'm building up my lab uh, as i'm playing around with this uh, lenovo se450 that they sent me um I'm, I'm finding that i need some extra storage so that's where these uh, two dell r710s are going to come in handy now on the primary dell r710 uh, I'm running a uh, dual uh, X5675 Xeon processors in here. You know, it's probably consuming 120 watts at idle. I know it seems like a lot these days, but back in my day, it wasn't. It was nothing to pull 120 watts at idle. So, uh, and this machine will do a lot. Uh, it will host a lot of virtual machines. It has good computational skills. It has a lot of RAM in here, 96 gig of RAM. And uh, it has uh, my 10 gig Mellanox cards in here. Uh, I've also got some uh, bunch of hard drives in here and a drive under drive array. And so it makes for really good archival storage. And this is not something I need to keep up and running all the time. So as you can see, I've got six uh, two terabyte hard drives in here, which gives me a total storage capacity of 10.9 terabytes and of that I've got about seven terabytes free. I put things on here like my exports. So here's all my virtual machines that I've created uh, for, for that uh, Lenovo SE450 that we're evaluating and playing around with. Plus my basic 
uh, virtual uh, virtual machines for Hyper-V. So I need lots of storage for that. So that's that's a good place to keep these exports. And then I've got my Hunky Joe's Playhouse videos in there. And then I've got my critical applications that I don't want to have to spend time downloading again saved here as well. And I still have plenty of storage for, for other virtual machines that I create. But for now, we'll use this as a storage location for, for that and try to integrate Proxmox into that as well. And then I only need to bring these servers up when the time is right. When you know, And I only use them for a few hours when they're up and running. Uh, bring them up once a month to do, you know, do updates, make sure they're kept up to date with the latest and greatest software. But so they don't sit there consuming a whole lot of power most of the time anyway. And, uh, I, the best part is I can run windows, native windows server on here. So if we go here to device manager, you're going to see, I wasn't lying when I said it detected all of my devices without any trouble, uh, whatsoever. Uh, Let's see, my network adapters, Mellanox Connect X2, my QLogix, uh, portable devices, print queues, processors, uh, USB devices, USB controllers. Yeah, it, it just detected everything. I didn't have any issues with drivers whatsoever. Let's see, system devices. Yeah, it knows what chipset it's on, exact uh, that kind of thing. And that's... One of the, frankly, one of the other reasons I use uh, Windows because it's just uh, it's just simple, dead simple. All right, so here is the uh, the second of the two Dell R710 servers I have in my rack. This run, one is running a, a two a dual Xeon X5670 CPU, so it gives me a total of 12 cores, two sockets, and 24 logical processors. Now this one is the uh, lesser powered of the two R710s. This one only has 32 gig of RAM, which is fine for what I need it for. And it only has, uh, I believe they're 140 gig SAS uh, 2.5 inch hard drives in here. So the other thing I've done is I have gotten a hold of the folks at Drivebender Version 3.9.9.5 is out. It works with Windows 11. It works with Windows Server 2022. My license keys all work. Uh, it was long in coming. The one criticism I would have of them is it took them a long time to get it to make it happen. But that day has come. And so as you can see, I'll bring up Drivebender here. I've just put those seven or eight drives in a, in a, a Drivebender drive array. And each drive is uh, 136 gig. So it gives me a total storage capacity of, I think, what, one, one and a half terabyte or one terabyte. So there it is, one, one terabyte of storage. But that's okay because I do have some archival needs. I might as well use these drives, right? Use them as archive storage. And DriveBender knows where all the files are and it keeps them in a non proprietary format which is one of the other reasons I like DriveBender. StableBit Drive Pool does it the same way. They keep regular sounding file names. They don't they don't change those. But they just create a database that tells it, you know, DriveBender where each file is if it needs it. So um, and you see it takes very little overhead to run this. It's it's not consuming a lot of RAM or processes. And it's also here for backup Hyper-V storage. So most of my uh, most of my stuff runs on Hyper-V right now. Not sadly, I'm not all on Proxmox or all in on Proxmox. So a lot of it runs on Hyper-V. So I use these. I don't have much else to use these two servers for. So I use this as like a backup Hyper-V in archival storage. Now I've created uh, another export folder for all of my archival exports and right now that's over on I think it's on the Dell 710 001 yeah there it is there's my exports folder so I'm just gonna go ahead and map a network drive and we'll just call it X for exports and as you can see I've already got some Windows uh, 
some virtual machines out here already set up. Their images, that is. Now, if it says 10p, it's 10 professional. This was the uh, month and year it was created. So I get a 10 Pro, November 22 of 2022. And then I have an 11 Pro retail. Um, however, I'm going to replace this. I'm going to, first I'm going to copy this one. Yeah, I'm going to copy and paste that over here. Um, so this is 11 Pro, 1122 Sys Prepped. That needs to come over here as well. Now I already have a 2019 uh, trial and Sys Prepped, uh, trial and retail, both that were Sys Prepped on the 29th of November. So I don't need to recreate them from here. So I don't need to worry about these two. I can get rid of these two exports. All right, so we'll let those finish copying, and uh, then I'll need to export some of the others, but I want to let this uh, server run a while, so we'll let those copies finish. Now, some people might argue that it's actually time to retire those Dell R710s, and they're just wrong. Uh, I'll retire them when I'm damn ready to retire them. I love those Dell R710s. They just, we just love them. Yeah, they're getting long in the tooth, and there'll become a time when it's not feasible. I, I thought the same thing two, three years ago, too, and here I am still running them. As long as I put a piece of software on there that is suited to run that, and I think, I think Server 2022 is that software. Uh, it gives me everything I need for as often as I run these units and then use them for a task-specific purpose. Uh, then, you know, you'll be seeing more of these uh, in our lab videos as time goes along because I like to, one of the things I've always wanted to do about this lab series of videos and kind of fallen short on is follow through and show you how I build upon the lab. Whereas my previous modus operandi was to tear the lab down and restart from scratch as my thought process changed. But now that I've gotten older and wiser, and I'm on medication now. Uh, it slows down the brain function so I can think things through a little bit more clearly. Uh, I think, yeah, I think these, I think server 2022 will be staying around, sticking around on these Dell R710s. But as you know, just like everything else at Uncle Joe's Playhouse, that's in a state of flux. So there you go. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Don't let people tell you you can't do stuff with old equipment. You can. And it's uh, if it's relevant to you, then it's still relevant. Uh, if you agree with that, give us a like. Smash that like button. Leave your comments down in the comments section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click that notification bell to be notified when new videos are released. We appreciate your patronage and helping us keep the lights on if you're so inclined. PayPal, Patreon, the YouTube join function, and, and just become a YouTube premium member, cut out all the ads on all your favorite YouTube creators, have the ability to download videos, much, much more. Check into it. It's not that expensive. Even the king of cheap is paying for it because I believe in supporting creators that I watch on YouTube. If you believe that, join us then. And don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side.